Hi everyone, and welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Today we're gonna talk about turntables. We're gonna discover through nine main tips how to find the good, the right turntable, a budget-minded turntable. We don't wanna spend too much. This is probably the first step you're taking in this new world, in the analog reproduction of music, and it's kind of difficult to move around to understand how to do that, how to find the correct turntable to start this new passion in order to reproduce music in a correct way without spending an arm and a leg. Yes, let's take a look. So, today we're going to explore nine tips on how to choose your first turntable. Uh, which means the nine things to look for when you're out there or in a digital environment on the, and on the web or if you're going to your, to your shop, to your local store or whatever. Nine aspects that I suggest, and not only me, you'll see if you look around, to look for, to look out for, to check. I think these, with these nine um, tips, you should find the best solution for you. Well, let's start from number one. Number one tip. Well, it might seem obvious, but you need to choose a turntable that is not too much expensive, obviously, and not too much, not too cheap. I mean, we have to find a good compromise. I know you're thinking, this is my first step in the analog domain, uh, in, in vinyl reproduction. I don't wanna spend too much. Maybe it's not for me. May I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I, have to, I wanna buy records. I don't wanna spend money on, too much on my turntable. I need to buy other elements of my system. Okay, you're perfectly right but do not buy a cheap turntable because after a few records, after a few hours of reproduction or when you're going to your friend's house or whatever, you're gonna say, oh my God, what a piece of I bought. I can't believe it. Come on. So invest a little bit of money. I think the good amount of money is around 200, 300 is best, I would say 300 euro or $300 more or less, wherever you're based, it depends. Do the math and you'll see, uh, you will obtain the right um, amount of money. So I would start moving around that price range. If you don't think that's the, the right price range for you, go directly to the used market. Absolutely, that's an excellent choice. You will find incredible um, turntables at half the price so you can you can look for models that go for example a thousand euro thousand dollars and you will find them for four three or sometimes even 200 if they're missing for example the cartridge so it depends obviously but I would go for something new around 300 or something used which obviously will be much better and at, at the same price range or even less if you can find something good in that in that case. Okay, tip number two. Well, uh, there are different models, different typologies of turntables. The main two typologies are belt drive turntables and direct drive turntables. What is the difference? It's very simple. The direct drive turntables have a motor that go directly under the platter and make them spin, I would say, rather immediately. In fact, usually for broadcasting or for DJs, this is the best solution. If we want to spend, if we're on a budget, if we don't want to spend much money, belt drives are the way to go. Absolutely. Because um, if the turntable is using a belt drive technology, it will cost much less. And actually, I must say that the best turntables under a certain price range are no doubt belt drive. Absolutely. Direct drive, you need to spend some money to find something good. Like for example, I have a Technics SL1200G, 
which goes around four thousand dollars this is my first direct drive i'm very happy with it but as i said it's very it's very expensive and we don't want that in this video we're trying to understand which, which is a, a first step in this world and i would no without any doubt go for a belt drive turntable okay let's proceed tip number three well it might seem maybe a stupid tip and very simple tip but it's rather important especially if you're going personally to shops to find your turntable and what is the tip well the tip is to buy heavy heavy weight um we want solid copper brass metal alumin aluminum whatever it is buy a heavy turntable it's more stable it will suffer less vibrations uh go for something uh heavy it don't you, you will see that it, it's mo almost 100 percent it will be a much better quality turntable so if you're picking something by hand even in the used market go for something heavy that's tip number three let's go for tip number four tip number four as i mentioned in an earlier video here's a link uh, it is fundamental to, in, at least in my opinion, to have an external preamp. What am I talking about? Well, uh, when you're reproducing a vinyl record, the signal must be preamplified, which means it must in be enhanced. It must be, um, we, we could just say simply make the signal more large, more strong more solid in order to deliver that very very um subtle weak signal music signal that's coming from your from your cartridge to the final amplifier the final receiver so before going from the cartridge which is reading your vinyl to the final amplifier the final receiver we need a step in the middle which is a pre-amplifier which pre-amplifies that music signal and then goes to the power amplifier so in most cases, low budget um, turntables have their preamp already installed inside, which it can be a good solution. Absolutely, absolutely. I think though that good quality turntables do not have the preamplifier on board. If you really fall, fell, fall in love with a, with a model, for example, Audio-Technica has a lot of great models, Unfortunately, all the budget uh, level models do have their pre-amplifiers built inside, which means that you cannot change that, and that will color the sound in a certain way. And later on, if you want to enhance your system, you're not going to be able to do that, unless you have a phono out, which means that uh, you can also bypass the phono preamp installed inside your turntable and shoot, let the signal go out uh, a normal interconnect cable and to the preamp you are going to buy. Also, another solution is to use the preamplifier built in your receiver, your power amplifier, your final amplifier. A lot of models uh, in the past had these already built in because obviously vinyl was the top of the tops. But, um, since vinyl is uh, coming back now, but until the last two decades, it was not very um, present, uh, you're not gonna find usually in a good amplifier a preamp, uh, a pre a preamp selection for your, for your turntable. But you never know. Check your receiver, you might have something there. But again, it's not gonna be of high quality. The best thing is to have your standalone preamplifier. Again, as I said, check that video. Okay, tip number five. Well, this is an important tip. A good turntable, a decent turntable, I would say, needs to have a removable and hence an adjustable cartridge. A lot of low budget uh, turntables already have their cartridge and you cannot remove it you cannot change it you can change probably the the stylus in certain in certain models 
But again, that's not a good quality cartridge, not even at, with a low budget. I do not absolutely recommend to use something like that with a, a, um, a permanent cartridge. Find um, a solution, a turntable with an arm that has the holes or or a good quality cartridge already included as a package, that's, per that's okay, no problem. The important though is that you can remove the cartridge from, your, from the arm, from the pins, and also at the same time move around the cartridge itself because uh, as we will see in a future video, you must be able to move it around to adjust the right direction of uh, the, uh, the right alignment of the cartridge in respect to the, the grooves in the vinyl. Okay then, tip number six. Well, with tip number six, we're hitting one of the most important topics, one of the most important tips that identify a good quality turntable. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a, an adjustable tone arm. Yes, a tone arm, tone arm must be adjustable. This perhaps may be the most important of all, because if you cannot adjust your tone arm, you're never gonna reproduce correctly your, your, your vinyls, your vinyl records, and resulting with distortion or a very bad sound and ruining at, at the end, ruining your records with a bad tracking. So this is fundamental. Do not think this is not important because it is very important. So mainly we, not mainly, we have three types of adjustment that you can do with um, a tone arm, which must be present in a good quality turntable. So first of all, there must be the, the capability of adjusting the tracking force, which is based on a counter, counterweight. What, what am I talking about? Well, at the end, here you can see an image, at the end of the tone arm, there should be a little weight. Well, this weight counterbalances the weight of the cartridge and obviously the arm itself. So according to that, we have to find the zero um, point, the, the, the zero gravity point where both sides of the torn arm, um, roughly said, are, are in balance. At that point, you can adjust the weight and uh, adjust the tracking force because on the side of the cartridge, obviously you're gonna have to add some weight by adjusting this this weight at the on the other side of the arm in order to have a tracking force which means how much weight is on the stylus of the cartridge and that that's a very important aspect we'll be we'll get that uh, we'll go more in detail on that when we're talking about in the future video on how to set your turntable so this is an important uh, aspect to adjust regarding the adjustment of your tone arm a second aspect that is the, uh, regarding the, um, the the capability of adjusting your tone arm is anti-skating. Anti-skating is fundamental because usually in tone arms, when you're set, when you have set it all the parameters with the cartridge, etc., there is a tendency of the arm to go a little on the outside due to the to the movement of the rotations of the grooves, etc., which brings the arm a little slightly to to go outside going let's say outside from the grooves on the outside part of the record while if you can regulate the anti-skating you will counterbalance this adding some weight in this case in this way uh, you will practically um, cut off this this effect and having a proper tracking of your grooves. So this is the second part of the adjust, adjustable tone arm, very important. The third part, which the third adjustment typology is rather rare, rare. not every turntable has it, but please check to if it has it. This is important. It's, it's the so-called VTA, which is the vertical tracking adjust, adjustment. What is that? Well, simply the capability of adjusting the arm so it's parallel to the turntable surface, to the, to the record, including obviously the cartridge. So this is very important because sometimes you're gonna have something like this, something like this, which will create mistakes in the tracking 
and in the, in the musical reproduction. So we need these three aspects in an adjustable torn arm. Do not forget this. Okay, so let's proceed. Tip number seven. Well, this is a simple tip. Um, I just suggest you to buy a turntable that has its um, the, uh, an output, two channels output, two channels RCA sockets output on the back on the back of this on the back or in front wherever it is of the turntable. Um, what am I trying to say? Well, simply to have an output of the signal in order to put your own interconnect cables and connect it to the preamp, hopefully, or directly to the, um, the, the receiver, the amplifier. Uh, sometimes there's already bad quality uh, interconnects which coming directly from the, the chassis of the turntable, which is not a good idea. That is only a good idea if it's a direct wire, which means that the wire is directly connected to the pins of the cartridge, which means a minimum signal break. You'll have the tracking from the cartridge, which goes directly in the RCA internet connect cables and to the receiver or preamp, hopefully, or preferably, or to the amplifier. So that's that's the best solution. Um, uh, well, alternative solution, if you do not have, or you do not find the model you're interested with an output, a music signal output. Okay, tip number eight. Tip number eight is uh, dedicated to avoiding facts. I suggest to avoid all those mechanisms, electronics uh, that you do not need, uh, or at least if you don't think are fundamental, try to do not to try to find a model that does not have, for example, a Bluetooth output. Um, and anything that regards the automa automation of the arm, which goes automatically back in position, etc., etc., you, you don't want that. That is not going to help. The music signal inside is not going to help the entire mechanisms of the the arm, of the bearings of the arm, of the platter. High quality turntables, even high end turntable, turntables, do not have all this uh, stuff which might seem interesting, but it, it's, it's usually just uh, something mm, to, to, to catch the eye, to, to bring teenagers or, or, or people interested in converting files in, di in the analogic room, an analogic signal in a digital file and things like that. I mean, if you're looking for something dedicated to that aspect, okay, then go for it. But otherwise, try to avoid that. That's my suggestion at least. Okay, let's proceed. Tip number nine. Well, be careful in checking the speed of your turntable. Uh, obviously, it has to be capable of going the, uh, the 33 and one third revolutions per minute, which is the standard speed of a, uh, of a, classic, a classic vinyl record. Also check if it has a 45 revolutions per minute, which is good for playing um, singles or also high quality albums, which sometimes are offered in, in that format and that um, speed, because the higher the speed, as we said in another, vi in another video, here's the link, um, the higher the dynamics. So that's important. Also, if you're interested in going a little back in time and explore 78 uh, uh, revolutions per minute records, which is Victrola's, Shellac, all that stuff, which is greatly fascinating. Although you need a different cartridge and things like that, we will talk about that in a, in a new video. Um, check if the turntable is capable of doing that because it, now it's very rare to find a turntable that also offers a 78 uh, revolutions per minute speed. If you're not interested in those old Victrolas, forget about it. You just need 33 and 40, 45 in your set, in your go. Good to go. <sighs> okay then. Well, these are my nine tips. I just want to give you a few examples of turntables. I think I uh, have a good quality, are, are a good compromise between um, obviously the quality of the different components and the price you're going to pay.
So I would say in my first top choice, I, I would go for the project lineup, the budget lineup. Like for example, the project debut carbon uh, or the project um, basics, basic, the, the, the basic line, the basic uh, models of the project um, company. I will put some links and descriptions in the uh, video description here below. In my second choice, which more or less goes at the at the same level as the, my first choice is Rega, which is an excellent and historical uh, company that ma makes makes turntables since uh, the, the, at least the 70s, and the RP1 uh, model, which is the, the the basic model of Rega, is or the RP2, uh, which is a little more expensive than the budget we discussed before, are excellent models. Uh, these models offer all everything that we've just discussed, uh, which go around $300, 300 euro, 300 pounds, more or less. It depends, obviously, where you're based. It depends where you're going to buy this. Or an excellent solution, as I already said, is to go in the used market and buy these or better models for a cheaper price, a much cheaper price. An excellent model, which I suggest you, which costs a lot more, much more, around a thousand dollars euro, um, is a clear audio concept. I would put this in my third position. I had a clear audio emotion, which is a step below, which is a, a complete acrylic model, which was fantastic. I think was it was an excellent model, which cost a little bit. I mean, we're talking about five or six years ago, it was around 1,000 euro, but it had everything. It also had an excellent tone arm, an excellent cartridge. You were set, excellent motor. You were set with, with just with that expense. Uh, the same thing is with the Clear Audio Concept. There are a great um, German uh, company. I highly suggest their products, although they are much more expensive and we already are in a different uh, a different segment of what we're talking about. We're talking about budget, budget turntables. Your first, your first team turntable. Go for the project models or the Rega. That's my suggestion. Or the used market. Okay, though. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying these videos. Click thumbs up or thumbs down if you didn't like this video. And hope to see you soon. Bye, guys.